The most basic requirement for being called alive is having a genetic material present. In most cases it's DNA, a macromolecule that literally defines alive matter. In nature, DNA is present in various shapes and forms, like chromosomes or even plasmids. In today's video, we're gonna have a brief overview of plasmid DNA, its characteristics and history. Before even mentioning the history and the origin of plasmid DNA, let's define what actually plasmid is. The plasmid is a combination of two words, plasm, meaning cytoplasm of the cell, and ID, meaning in. AKA plasmid is a DNA which is located in the cytoplasm of the cell. The main distinction between plasmid and the linear piece of DNA is that plasmid has a circular shape, which is made out of the double-stranded DNA. It mostly occurs in bacteria, divided separately from chromosomal nucleic DNA. Also, it is quite small compared to chromosomal DNA, ranging from 10 kilobase pairs to 400 kilobase pairs. First time the term plasmid was used in 1952 by Joshua Lerenberg, describing any type of genetic material functioning separately from the cell nucleus. But it has become particularly prominent as a scientific tool in molecular biology and genetics. Plasmid is made out of small segments of DNA. They all have separate importance and characteristics. One of the most important is a selection marker, antibiotic resistance gene. Imagine you modified your bacteria with plasmid DNA, then how are you supposed to determine whether bacteria took up new DNA or not? And this is where antibiotic resistance gene comes up. By allowing bacteria to become resistant towards particular antibiotic, it will be able to only culture once that took new DNA. It will basically put particular antibiotic in medium. Bacteria that took up new DNA will be resistant towards that antibiotic. Therefore, will survive, and ones that fail to take up new DNA will die. One of the most frequently used antibiotics are amphicillin, kinamicin, bleomycin, streptomycin, and so on. Next one is original replication, aka ORA. It basically is the place where DNA replication begins. There are numerous types of ORIs. Some of them let plasmid divide faster, some slower. Some produce more copies compared to others. In the end, you choose what type of ORI you need based on the experiment you were doing. The main purpose of the plasmid is the expression of genetic material, genome interest. Otherwise, what's the point? So, genome interest is the most important part of plasmid DNA. It could be any sequence and is completely dependent on your needs. Genome interest basically is the genetic material that you want to synthesize inside the cell. Next one is promoter. Plasmid region there is directly responsible for the initiation of the RNA transcription process of genome interest, usually found at the beginning of the gene, containing RNA polymerase. Restriction sites are also quite handy. I mean, if you want to do real work and not just light up some E. coli under the UE, it is actually doable without even knowing what the restriction sites are. Just kidding. E. coli with GFP is cool as hell. Let's get back to restriction sites. Restriction sites are located at the end parts of the insert, aka genome interest, and by using matching restriction enzymes, we are able to cut open plasmid and put preferred inserts in. And that's all. I mean, I'm not touched everything, and plasmid is way more diverse than I could have portrayed in this video, but I wanted this video to be more like an introductory rather than boring as fuck to you. Plasmid is a powerful tool in molecular biology, and quite fun too. We are able to do some wonderful stuff with it, like nourishing white I neglected folks with engineered crops that has been modified to synthesize beta carotene, or making plants glow. I mean, just why not, right? By the way, please check my new plasmid t-shirt. Any purchase will be hugely appreciated and would really, really help. Link is in description below. Thanks for watching.